What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Work Knife Balance. We're going to be diving into the pickled steel knives we unboxed the other day and uh, just taking a little bit closer look at them. So, without further ado, let's head to the top down. All right. So we've got the Rhino up top and we have the Warhog down below. These come in from Pickled Steel Knives, which is a South African knife company that I uh, found out. So we'll go ahead and do some side-by-side -side measurements. We'll go ahead, we'll talk a little bit about Pickled Steel as a company, and then we'll go ahead and dive into the knives a little bit further too. We'll go ahead and start with the Warhog here. This is the one that in the first impressions, I really uh, was drawn to this one a little bit more. I like the fidget factor of this bar lock. This is a fantastic bar lock. This is a D2 steel. This is the production production run of this knife right here from Pickled Steel. So this is a, a uh, I want to say, I'm probably going to butcher the name, but Johan Jordan or Jordan. Um, and if that sounds familiar, you can see the maker's logo right there. Johan has a couple knives out there with a couple other companies and the reason this knife looked so familiar is because this knife was actually a runner-up for one of the Kaiser competitions I believe for the Sheepdog uh, may have been for the XU competition but for the, I think it was for the Sheepdog competition and this gives very much Sheepdog vibes about it so this wasn't the one that Kaiser picked but it was picked up by Pickled Steel to be made and uh, now we can see a production run of what is going to be probably a really fantastic designer in Johan Jordan um, with a lot of the really cool designs coming out. You can follow him on Instagram and you can see some of the stuff there. So we'll go in a little bit further into measurements and then side by side comparisons for the Warhog and then we'll dive into the Rhino a little bit further. But we've got seven and a half on the overall length. Blade length, they're looking at about three and a quarter with a cutting edge of about three inches exact right there you do have a nice little kind of uh choil area you can choke up if you need to and then get over the edge you don't really feel the blade a ton um, but i don't think it's designed for that choke up i mean it could be it's fairly flat and then it gives you a really good kind of area to rest in here but yeah so i really enjoy that about that we're gonna go ahead and pull out some spider co's to compare to so we've got the pair three and then we'll get the pair two as well put these out here so you can kind of see it's a little bit larger than that pair of three um, but it's a really good comparison to the pair of three and then definitely smaller than that pair of two right there as well we're gonna go ahead and pull out the Devo Growler uh, this is another one that's kind of got a big belly knife to it as well really really close comparison in the growler size this is the growler v1 so if you've got that, you can kind of see that going through right there. And then last but not least, just because I've got it here as well, we'll go ahead and pull out another big belly knife in the Kunwu Padre right here. So give you some good side-by-side -side comparisons through some fairly familiar knives. May not be quite as common, uh, but knives you've probably seen on the channel before and can, can know what to do with that. So... With this Warhog, we do have a crossbar lock. I don't know if Pickled Steel has a name for theirs. Crossbar, access, clutch lock, whatever you want to call it. It is just a bar that's actuated by Omega Springs to come down right through here. So it is a crossbar lock, locking knife. It is very well tuned. It's absolutely a fidget fun knife to mess with right here. The only knock I had on this when it was unboxed was the clip. I don't necessarily love the clip. I don't like the design of the wire. Um, it, it is very hard to get around the kind of hot spot that clips cause on some knives, but this one right off the bat, it just wasn't necessarily, uh, it, it was it was more noticeable than others. And so I would look at seeing if um, maybe like a Lynch Northwest clip could fit in there, or if you could get a different wire clip in there, or even just popping it out and see if you can bend those in some. It's not my knife, so I didn't want to mess with it at all on that. But that's the one big thing on the Ergos for me. Other than that, it feels good in hand. You get a good purchase, four-finger purchase in here. And you can then have the nice jimping on the back side. And then you've got the depression that if you, on the top part of the knife here, that if you wanted to choke up in that area, you can actually get in there and have a really good fit and feel to it. Swedge follows that depression and then down on the front edge to the tip of the blade right there as well. So it's a really good knife. 
This does come in a couple different colors. Um, it has the black and red, the red accents on the thumb studs and the collar around the pivot. There's a green micarta, a black micarta, and a brown micarta to come through this. So with it being black and red, my choice would probably be the black micarta, just keeping it all the two color scheme rather than the three color scheme coming through there. But uh, it this in itself does not look bad at all. You have a very kind of militaristic vibe to it. Um, it definitely is a hefty knife, it feels good in hand. This feels like a knife that's going to withstand a lot of beating, and I like that about it. Getting into the knife itself, this knife does come in a D2 steel, as you can see on the back side right there, D2 Warhog with Johan's Maker's logo, and then on the other side you've got the Pickled Steel logo as well. I think this won't be as much of an issue because it looks like they have an acid etch to the blade right here or, or a black deep stone wash to it or something like that. But um, the D2 steel, the one thing, I do like D2 steel. I have a couple D2 steel knives, uh, one of them being kind of this uh, over here. We've got my Rat 2. I've got a D2 Rat 2. I've got an Oz 10 Rat 2. And then I've got a couple other D2 uh, fixed blades as well. D2 is not bad, but D2 does tend to rust in more humid climates. Um, and so if you take a look at Aries EDC video on the Warhog, I did kind of look into that a little bit before um, taking a look at this one. He's shown how D2 in his climate in Florida isn't necessarily the best, and you can see kind of the rust spots on it. And then I found out that they used 14C28 on the prototype, and then they switched to D2. So I don't know if they did that because D2 was more readily accessible, but D2 does not have the best corrosion resistance. And so I kind of knowing that they did 14C for the prototype would probably stick with 14C for the production run. Um, not sure why you would make that, in my opinion, step down for the production run unless you were just really trying to bring the price down um, and the price point down. But uh, either way, it's still a pretty sweet knife. And I think with the kind of edge that, or sorry, the, the finish that they put on the blade here, you're not going to have to worry about it as much. I believe both of these knives, from everything that I found, and we'll take a look at the Rhino up here in just a second, were OEM'd by Remet. And you may remember Remet. We had the Peacock on here last year from Remet. They have some amazing budget knives. You can find them on Amazon, and they are doing OEM work for other companies now. And so Pickled Steel seems to be one of those companies out of South Africa that Remet is doing some OEM work for. And to me, that gave a little bit of comfort around the knife. And then I looked into Pickled Steel and I saw a lot of Remet knives on Pickled Steel rebranded. So did a little bit of digging and research. Looks like there's a really kind of symbiotic relationship between Pickled Steel and Remet. Um, Remet is making some Pickled Steel knives and designs and Pickled Steel is then able to use Remet knives or Remet designs and rebrand them and sell them on their website as well. So as far as I know, it's all above the board. There's no cloning, copying or anything like that going on with it. Um, but that's just from the first bit of knowledge that I found and kind of just wanted to be honest, throw that up front as I kind of went through and figured all that out as well. And big shout out to Casey from Knives Fast because a lot of that information came from his video and then me reaching out to kind of contact and see um, what I could find out a little bit more as well. So yeah, that is the Pickled Steel Warhog. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Rhino now. We'll go ahead and set the Warhog. Well, we can leave it up there on screen a little bit so we can see it. But this is the Rhino. This is the one that I absolutely love this blade shape. I don't know what to call it. Uh, it is kind of just a reverse Tonto, a big belly reverse Tonto. And then you've got a really, really big depression here. Uh, thumb depression, hand depression, index depression, whatever you want to call it. And I think that gives the rhino shape in the, to, the, to the knife. So it's definitely a rhino blade here. You have uh, kind of two different swedge angles coming through here. So you've got this swedge coming off the tip. But you can see that it actually comes in there with a secondary angle coming off the back there to meet this flat edge. And that in itself kind of brings a little bit more of that. Like you can see the rhino's snout the rhino's horn, the eye, the nose, use your imagination a little bit, it's there. And I think that is, if I were to call this a blade shape, this is a rhino blade shape. That's just what it is. So really loved this knife. This is one that I could get behind uh, much, much more. 
um, than that than the the Warhog. Nothing really wrong with the Warhog. It's a really good design. Ergos. I didn't like the clip, but other than that, it's a fantastic knife. I just don't like big chunky knives as much. So this one though, I really enjoyed, and this is a slicer. This has a fantastic belly on it. This thing's pretty sweet. So we'll go ahead and do some tip to tail measurements. We'll do some side by side comparisons. And then um, right before we end it, we will kind of do last final impressions on the pickled steel knife. So overall measurements, we're looking at about eight inches, a little bit more than eight inches, we'll say 8.05 inches on it. For the blade length, we're looking at three and a half with the cutting edge right around three and a half as well. You have a very, very small sharpening choil right in there. So there's no choke up room on this at all. But if you wanted to really hug the front edge, you can get in here and feel that. But yeah, really fantastic knife. I'm going to set that over here, actually, while we start to do some side-by-side -side comparisons. While we pull these out, um, so this first one we're going to pull out is going to be a Sharif Manganis. We've got the Kubi uh, Momentum right here that we're going to be looking at for that one as well. For a larger knife, we'll go ahead and pull out the Ontario Model 1, Rat 1 right there. So you kind of see some larger knives in comparison with this. Definitely fits in that large knife category at over 8 inches. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Let's go ahead and pull out the Kaiser Veritas. That's going to be up top. And then we will do the NAFS Lander 2 down below. Give you a little bit more common knives to take a look at and see there as well. Hopefully you all have handled one of those or both of those before and you can see the differences in there. Um, so yeah, so there's some, some good side-by-side -side comparisons to it right there. I think the Rat 1 and the Momentum are probably two of the closest size comparisons for this knife right here. Different blade shape. There was nothing that I could find that had a similar blade shape really to this, but yeah. For the Rhino, we are sitting on 14C 28N steel, which I think is a much better steel choice than the D2, and it is fantastic. Um, you have the G10 uh, contoured scales on this, and this comes in a couple different colors. Um, so this, this is the orange one right here. I do believe there is a black one as well. And then you have a um, what looks to be a single-sided pivot release here. So that's letting me know that you probably caught a D-shaped pivot in here, which is really nice. Um, I initially thought this was Remet when I was messing with it and feeling it, and so I'm happy to find out that it actually is Remet. I have had a couple budget Remet knives in here, and it just kind of felt very similar. So that was kind of a, a sweet little call. This is has a really good thumb stud. You can reverse flick on that thumb stud. You can thumb flick on that thumb stud, and you can button push it out. Now, initially in the unboxing, uh, the detent was fantastic, and so I may throw a little bit of oil in there. You can button press it really easy, and it goes through, but if you did a light f switch, you can fail it. If you do a, a light flip, you can fail it. So um, I will say it's maybe on that medium to light detent. Nothing crazy about it. The one, one, one big call out I have is um, the designer of this knife, Miguel Hetzel, uh, put his name and branding right here. I don't love it. That's that's that that to me is that kind of like the biggest like ah, why? It's I mean I it's a it's an aesthetic choice and uh, maybe they want to put their name there and that's totally great. I have really enjoyed knives that have if you want to put your name on the knife, do something like what uh, Ray Laconico does and really small right up top here. Our Laconico. Or I have seen some of the others where they put it, uh, both Laconico and Owen have sometimes put it right on the spine up here. So it's a little bit more hidden and not there. Just right on your clip like that is, it's a lot, it's a lot out there. And then everyone's going to see Miguel Hetzel um, as you're walking around. And I don't, I don't love that. So I would definitely probably try and take that clip off. Now this one did come with the second clip. But the second clip also has the name on it. So maybe that's a choice you can make if you're going to send a second clip. Because it is just a steel clip and it is a very light bent over steel clip. It doesn't seem um, like there's good retention. But I think they're sending a second one because they know it's probably going to bend out. If you're sending a second one, maybe send the second one without the name. So you've got the choice and the option to have the maker's name on the clip or not have the maker's name on the clip. But that would probably be the one big thing on this knife that I didn't like. I did not like the maker's band branding right through there. Put it somewhere else um, and I, I would be more than happy to see it 
um, and, and give them credit, but I don't want that sticking out of my pocket hanging there personally. So, so yeah, this is though probably, it, it definitely much more ergonomics, um, comfortable. The ergos on this are way more comfortable than the Rhino in my opinion, and that's just because uh, I don't feel that clip from the Rhino. Uh, in there, this one sits flush, sits nice. You can feel it in hand there, which is really good. And then one thing they did as well too is if you look at this, which is something I haven't seen a ton of times, they actually chamfered the inside of the back of the liner. So they chamfered the inside of the back of the liner right there. When you put your finger down, you don't feel any bit of that liner sticking out, even on the button push right there. And it makes for a I mean, that's something that is new and different that I haven't seen on a lot of knives and um, makes for a really comfortable kind of, I guess, opening with the knife if you use the uh, flipper tab on the backside there. So without using the flipper tab, you can definitely get it out there really nice and easy as well. There is a chamfering for access right here, but the access they gave you is very little. They chamfered the inside of the liner, but I would have loved to see this cut down a little bit further. Um, so then you have a little bit more access to that liner lock. Now you can get in there and uh, remove it, but you have to kind of come over and then down in to get in there and, and push that liner out of the way. There was a little blade play on this one. Uh, I guess you would you call it uh, lock rock on this one, but not a ton, and it's not every time. So uh, I, I do know I've, I watched a couple of the other videos on it, and they were they were mentioning that there might have been a little bit of lock rock in there on some of these, but I, I don't know if it's worked itself out. I don't know if someone uh, kind of tuned it or did something, but I, I don't feel the lock rock every time, and sometimes it's almost like I'm forcing to feel the lock rock. So that in itself makes me feel comfortable that it's probably not in there, um, or at least it's not a widespread along every single knife um, that comes through, every rhino that's going to come through from pickled steel. So yeah. I don't have prices on either of these knives because they are coming from South Africa. I will go ahead and link Pickled Steel's website down below. Um, so you can go ahead and follow that and, and take a look there. But all the prices are in South African. Um, so there's probably a conversion once you go through to purchase. I wasn't going to be purchasing these knives. Um, as much as they are fantastic, they just aren't going to be coming to my collection. Um, and I, I don't want to pay for shipping from South Africa. I don't know what that shipping is going to be like. But um, so if, if this is something that, that tickles your fancy and you want to go pick them up, there will be a link below. I believe they're probably looking at the, the handle material, the blade material and everything. I believe they're both probably going to be in that $60 to $80 range, uh, but not much more than that. And if it is much more than that, then I think you're probably paying too much for this. And really, I would say the the uh, Warhog could probably be closer to that 40 to 60 range with the D2 steel. Um, and just looking at it, there is a lot of material on this. So, I mean, if it is in that $60 range, that's, that's understandable there. Uh, for this one, there's a lot of material and you've got 14 c 28 m So it's a little bit better blade steel in my opinion. So I could see 70, 80 bucks for this guy right here. But um, yeah, feel free to follow that link down below and take a, take a look at that. Um, last but not least, if you stuck around this long, thank you for uh, wasting 18 minutes of your life watching my video. But um, we appreciate it, and we would appreciate it so much more if you're not a subscriber to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're going to continue to make videos, and we'd love for you to see them. So I don't have much left for you. Until next time, TTFN.